Loops in programming languages allow us to have repetitive tasks repeated dynamically over and over and over again. This helps us as programmers write efficiently. So for example, I could print each one of these names out to the console. So I could say console.log and then we take a look at the class register like a teacher will pull out the register and then we start to iterate through it. So we start at zero and then we go to one and then two. So that is all of the indexes. This is the zero index, then you got one, and then you got two. And we can print out these strings, these elements here in the array to the console. Save that and hit refresh. Now that's okay, but the class register could potentially change. We could add names in there or actually delete names out of there. On top of that, doing it this way means I have to write it out line by line. And as I said, there's a problem with this because things can change, things can be altered, and that's not good for us. So having a repetitive execution will prevent this from happening, and it will allow our program to be more flexible. So let's go ahead and take a look at the for loop. And you'll notice with the for loop, syntactically, it looks very similar to the if statement where you have the parentheses, and then also you have the braces and in the parentheses we define conditions and then also you have the conditional execution context that will execute when the conditions have been met and you can think of the if statement as a singular on its own so for example if this condition is met then run this instruction once but you can think of the for loop as a plural as multiple. So for example, the condition may be true for maybe two or three seconds whilst your program is executing. So this condition while it's being met is like a plural, it's running this execution context multiple times. So you have the single version, which if you just wanted to check something once and run something once, you'd use if. And if you would like a plural, then you would use a loop, for example. Now, what do we do here with the loop? Well, first of all, you need an index. Why? Well, when a teacher goes through a register, for example, we have a teacher with a class register. What she does is she starts ticking off boxes and saying, right, that's uh, Lawrence, are you here? Tick the box. John, are you here? Tick the box. Jeff, you're not here. You know, cross the box. But whatever there is, there's an index for each one of those persons. So she knows where she is in the register. So likewise, we have a teacher here and this teacher needs to know where they are in that register. So what I'm gonna do is create a variable called i, which is index. You could call it whatever you wanted. You don't have to give it the name of i, but I will. And I'm gonna set i equal to zero. And yes, you can define this variable within the parentheses. So var i equals zero. Then we put an ending semicolon because that's actually one statement. That's one part of it. But the next part is the actual condition itself. If this condition remains true, then we continue to execute. So what I want to do here is say, is i less than the class register dot length? Now, what have I just done here? Well, this next part, this next statement is a conditional statement. Now, i at the moment is zero. So zero is less than the class register dot length. Now, let's take a look at the array itself. If you actually take a look at the class register, don't forget they are objects, don't forget, that have the key names as the index, so 0, 1, 2, but you also have the length property, which tells you how many elements, how many values are within this array. And you'll notice it has three elements, 1, 2, and 3. And this is actually quite nice because we're starting at 0 and then we are taking a look at the length, which the length tells us there's three elements in the array. And this actually works quite nice. So is i less than class register dot length. So whilst i is less than the class register dot length, we're just going to keep running this execution context. But likewise, you need to make sure that at some point this condition right here fails. So if i always remains at zero, this condition is always going to be true and it's always going to execute. And you can see the problem there. If you continually execute something constantly, you're going to get an error in your program. So at some point it does need to fail. It just needs to last the lifetime of the condition and then it does need to fail. So 
what I'm going to do is say i++ plus plus, and this will increment i. Incrementing just means add one. So plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. De-incrementing means minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Dead easy. So we're eventually just going to keep on incrementing. And if you keep adding one, then it will eventually be great equal to the length of the array and at that point it will be false i will eventually be greater than or equal to the class register dot length it will no longer be less than and so this will eventually end up being false that's very important it's also important because we want to use i to access each one of these elements in the array so let's take a look at this we've defined an index counter so we've got something to store where we're at in this register then also you've got the condition in which if i is less than class register length we're not done we need to keep iterating over until we reach the end and then finally we just want to keep incrementing each time just like a teacher going through the register she is incrementing through the names one by one by one by one so what i want to do is console.log and then say class register and then i want to use the computed member access don't forget you can write a statement inside of here and you can actually pull out values and you can even use variables and yes we can use this variable i in our execution context for the for loop so please do remember that so i'm going to say console.log class register i and so let's take a look at what this actually produces i'm just going to hit refresh and you'll notice nothing changes it's still printing it out but this time i'm not having to write out line by line and if i add let's say a new name and save this now it's being printed out dynamically so what is actually occurring in this for loop first of all we have the class register and what we're doing is we're setting up the variable i is equal to zero so we're starting at the zero index and we're saying is i less than class register dot length so i is currently zero that's what i is so zero is less than class register dot length and don't forget that with your arrays this array here it is in fact an object and this object has the length property that tells us how many elements are in the array so if I go ahead and hit refresh again, zero is less than class register dot length, which is three. That just returns a value three, so that's true. So we're going to execute this execution context, and it's going to say console.log class register i, and it's going to look at the value of i, and it's going to be zero. Then after it's finished executing this context, we say i plus plus. So now i is equal to one. And is one less than the array length, which is three? Yes, it is. So we want to execute again, and i is now equal to one. And we're console.logging the class register one, which is John. That's John there. He's on the index of one. And then once it's finished executing, we add one again. So now var i equals two. And is two less than than three yes it is so execute it again console.log class register take a look at the value of i i is now equal to two and we want to print out the element with the index of two you got zero one and then two and jeff right there is printed out and that's it and then it's incremented again so now var i is equal to three now is three less than three no it's actually equal to three. So now this statement is false. And when this statement is false, we no longer execute and all of that's just dumped out. That's what's happening there is we're just simply iterating over, meaning going one by one by one each value. And all you need to do that is you need a counter to keep the index. Then you need to check the index to make sure that it's lesser than the length that you're trying to iterate through of an array for example, and then you want to keep incrementing until you have finished. So you are able to iterate, which means go one by one by one. And you can do iteration by two types. You can increment and de-increment. So at the moment we're incrementing, we're adding one. So we go one by one by one. We start here and then we keep adding one and go up. But de-incrementation means that we start at the end and then we go down the elements 
in the array. So that this is incrementation. If I go ahead and just copy this out, and then what we do is we just comment it out and paste it down below. We add incrementation. Now what I'd like to do is invert this and de-increment. So I'm gonna say class register dot length minus one. Is it greater than or equal to zero? And then we're gonna say I minus minus this time. We're taking away one. So let's separate these guys out a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. If I save this now, let's hit refresh and we should get an inverted list. Instead of going Lawrence, John, Jeff, it should be Jeff at the top. So if I hit refresh, there it is, Jeff, John, Lawrence. How did this work? Well, we have an index again. We need to make sure we have a place to start at and to keep in incrementing through. And in this case, we're de-incrementing and place where we start and de-increment through. And then what we do is we say, right, class register dot length is going to be three. So don't forget, class register is an array object with the length of three right here. But this right here, Jeff, the very last element, the very last index is actually two because it's zero indexed. So we actually want to say, right, go get the class register. Tell me the length and then minus one. Three minus one is two. That gives us the index of the last element in the array. So that's what we've got there. Three minus one equals two. That's going to point to Jeff. And if I change the length of the array, it would be different. So we have var i equals two. Then we're saying is i, which is currently two, greater than or equal to zero. And that's true. Two is greater than zero. So minus minus. So we start with i being two and then you keep de-incrementing. So i will eventually be one and then you go down to zero and zero is not greater than zero. However, zero is equal to zero. And so this statement is still true. And so we can pull out the very first element in the array. And finally, i will be equal to negative one. And when i is equal to negative one, negative one is not greater than, nor is it equal to zero. So it's gonna be false and that's it. So that's how you can increment through and de-increment through the elements in your array. Now, finally, there's one last thing I want to cover, which is the for in loop. So this time I'm gonna write for, and then I'm gonna create a variable called index, and this index is going to be for the class register. So what current index are we at in the class register? And then we're going to have our for loop and we can say console.log and then we can say class register and we can access the class register array and we can pull out whatever is at the value of index. So index to begin with is going to start at zero. Now, please do note that the for in loop is incrementation. It's not de-incrementation. So if you want to step back through your array, you want to go from the last element to the first, you need to write your for loops like this. However, if you want to increment, you can write it this way, but this way is very verbose, meaning it's, it's very stretched out. You've got to write a lot of code compared to this guy, which is a bit cleaner because we have the variable index equals zero. This will be automatically incremented. And we're saying, right, I want you to increment it for the class register. So take a look at all the indexes in the class register. And this variable here, which you just define the variable like that, you don't actually use the assignment operator. You just say var index and the index will automatically be assigned zero and then incremented one and then eventually two for our array because we only have three elements. So that's all that this is doing. It's just a memory pointer pointing to a number, an index that we can access. And as you can see, this is incrementing. It's starting from the beginning and going through. So we say class register index and that's it. We log out the class register and then we take a look at the index and it's going to be zero, one and two. Hit refresh and there it is, Lawrence, John, Jeff. So this syntax is a little bit cleaner and that's called the for in loop and we're taking a look for the indexes in the class register so you can see how that like strings together like a really nice sentence just don't forget the var keyword in there because we need a variable we need a memory pointer to point to a value so we're saying console.log class register index there it is. There are your different types of for loops. I definitely recommend sticking with for loops because for loops are heavily optimized in JavaScript. Even in older browsers, they are fast. They are incredibly, incredibly fast. So please make sure you use your for loops for repetitive tasks.